Voice October 2022, your favorite actors being interviewed. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, uh, back yet again for another installment of Voice October 2022. Uh, I'm Chris Neosi here again, and of course, uh, Voice October, where I uh, interview uh, various voiceover veterans uh, of this world. Uh, I am very happy to have, uh, I, I have no hesitation to say, one of my personal heroes uh, as a voiceover actor myself. Um, he's known for countless Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh characters, both human and creature alike. Uh, he's been Casey Jones from the Ninja Turtles. He's been Wolverine. He's been Megatron. He's been Cobra Commander. Uh, he played my father, uh, Degwinzabi, on Gundam Origin. Uh, he's been the voice of the Star Wars audiobook uh, expanded universe series for many, many years. Uh, I'm joined by Mark Thompson. Hello, sir. Hey, how are you? Thanks for having uh, me, Chris. I'm doing good. No, thank you. I know you're uh, you were a busy man, as have been many of the guests I've had this year. So uh, <laughs> thank you for taking the time. Um, I'll, I'll get the the generic stuff out of the way. Uh, just just to you know jump in here. Um, uh, d please part with us our, your your tragic backstory as to how you were bitten by the acting <laughs> bug and uh, wanted to pursue this crazy, ridiculous life of entertainment that we've all resigned ourselves to. <laughs> Um, it's, uh, probably pretty typical. Like I, I wasn't super athletic. I wasn't super like academic, but, uh, I, I kind of found my niche with, uh, the drama club and, and acting and in choir and all that stuff. And so I had some really great teachers in high school that really encouraged me and, uh, kind of, uh, nurtured me and, and helped me to really love performing. Uh, and then kind of, decided that I wanted to do that. And, you know, it was a little scary because it's not the most stable career in the world. But uh, my my mom, especially like really she she was just super supportive and kind of uh, coached me through how to kind of help uh, pitch it to my dad and kind of convince him. So then I went to NYU and I, I uh, studied acting there. And uh, right around my sophomore year, there was an audition uh, and this was like before the internet. So it was like, you know, they had like a, a cork board and it was just a piece of paper. And uh, I had to like go on there and uh, audition for a cartoon that was happening on MTV. And it was basically like leave a, a voicemail on this answering machine. And it was a cartoon about vampires. So I, I think I just said something like, you know, I would like to be on your cartoon. <laughs> and they, it was good enough that they got me in the door. And that one didn't go into production, but then another one did called Daria. And that was like my first job ever. And uh, and from there, it just kind of snowballed. And I, I started kind of finding a lot of work in voiceover um, and uh, happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs> Still to this very day. Yeah, uh, yeah it's funny because I remember, uh, you know, David Wills, uh, oh, yeah. fellow New York or uh, East Coast gentleman I, he was one of the first folks i ever interviewed like probably half my life uh, ago at this point and i remember he talked about a similar story where i think it was with um oh gosh the claymation uh, uh celebrity death match oh yeah I did where same kind of thing yeah. they like just call in and do an impression on the phone and yeah. if it's good enough we'll call you. it's like <laughs> wow like what a what a process for casting in in oh, that yeah. era um yeah. but uh, it's interesting too because i i'm sure and a lot, myself and a, probably a lot of other fans associate with you with uh with your anime stuff but um yeah to know that uh when i found out from i think it was cartoon gamers interview which shout out to him malik you're a great guy um he you talked about uh the the daria story and everything and uh, so you started in the prelay original animation uh, kind of scene in New York when that was more commonly a thing in that era, you know, Beavis yeah. and Butthead and a lot of that stuff. Um, when you got to into the environment for that show, because, of course, you've been doing you know theater and everything before that, but getting to do uh, a, a Daria like with with Ke I think it was Kevin, right, was the the, the boyfriend in the school yeah. and everything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah was, was that was that like was that experience enough to be like, oh, I want to do more of this. This is this is great. <laughs> Kind of. Yeah. I mean, because it was like I, I was doing Kevin, but I also got to do Mr. DiMartino and Mr. O'Neill. And sometimes I would do just random, you know, walk on characters. So it was definitely like my first foray into doing a lot of different voices. And that was kind of appealing and exciting that, you know, I could play a bunch of different characters and come up with different voices. And it was believable enough that they wanted to use me. So that that was very exciting. And 
Uh, I, I was always kind of as a kid, you know, would mimic things I heard on television or, uh, you know, kind of, you know, interesting voices I would hear. I would try to imitate them and stuff. So I I was always kind of drawn to that. Um, but Daria was definitely like my first experience doing it and and other people like for, for work, you know, like people wanted to hire me to do that. So. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess so. Like it really it really got that ball rolling and I, I really enjoyed it and wanted to keep doing it. It's funny you you uh, you read my mind on one of the questions I had about uh, you 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 have felt like the type of person who would have been a mimic. I mean, did you watch like a lot of movies growing up? Like, where, have you always been doing like celebrity impressions and, and that kind of stuff? Like for as long as you can remember, kind of in tandem with the acting stuff too. Yeah, yeah. Like I uh, I had <laughs> I was on speech and debate team. Did you have that in your school? Oh yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. 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 So we did like you know dramatic interpretation and humorous interpretation or whatever and. Uh, Uh, There was one competition where uh, I decided to do the novelization of Star Trek Mm Two, and I it was basically doing impersonations of like you know Scotty and Kirk and Spock and you know all these things and uh, and my coach was so mad at me because she it wasn't like a serious piece of literature you know like it's supposed to like feature like some breakthrough playwright but I, I I got pretty far in like states competition doing that (laughs) and it was all like me doing my like scotty and and spock impersonations and all that stuff so it's how, how how ironic star trek before the inevitable yeah, uh, yeah. Star wars. <laughs> well, were, were you a, were you a fan of both i know you're obviously big 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 star wars fan were you a fan of both trek and, and wars when you were a kid I, as well i was and still am like i i really love both i was more into star trek in high school and then uh when i became, i think when i became a parent i got more into star wars but i i've always loved both but I was more into Trek uh, when I was yeah, younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that's that's always been kind of yeah. I still feel like there's a little bit of that rivalry in the same way that you know you know I know you also like comic stuff with DC and Marvel and everything where people yeah, feel differently yeah, yeah. about some of that stuff and everything. But none nonetheless, of course. Um, with uh, so so going back a little bit. So uh, so after Daria and then stuff started to take off and everything. Then. Uh, I guess like late 90s, early to mid 2000s was kind of the the major, you know, heyday of four kids. They they ruled Saturday morning uh, with two different blocks, yeah. of course. And uh, I know that you've known um, a lot of the other kind of big dudes that people would recognize from Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, Dan and Wayne and everybody uh, for quite yeah. a while. Um, how did you uh, kind of get involved with that scene of folks? Uh, like, did you know some of them before you worked at four kids or did you meet them after? I, I think what was it? Was it, it was like a Pokemon episode? I think was the first thing you did with them or how did that kind of whole era start for you? Yeah, that's right. Like, uh, so oddly, like uh, Pokemon was a backstage ad for me. So there was this uh, newspaper that it was in New York or just, you know, it was again, pre-internet yeah. stuff but like they would do all the postings in backstage so i answered it and this was back when taj studios was uh producing the english dub for pokemon right. so uh i i went in and they liked me and they used me and then it was only for like a handful of episodes i can't even remember what characters i did for mm-hmm. that but then four kids got the rights to it and and i was able to kind of switch over there and ended up getting my foot in the door over at four kids because of all mm-hmm. that and then that was like that was such an amazing place to work because they were they were producing so many shows. And basically, you know, if you worked on one, you were almost guaranteed that you were going to work on some of the other ones because they always needed more characters and, and more people or, you know, so you're always auditioning and getting new parts. And, you 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 know, there were like five different studios booths that, you you know, people were coming in and out of all day. And um, so it was it was it was a great place to work and i i did a lot of fun shows there um so yeah it was it was great so yeah but but that that first pokemon was kind of what got me in the door uh and then i got cast in a show called ultimate muscle which is about intergalactic wrestlers and stuff (laughs) so and uh, eric stewart uh directed that one and then i can't remember if i got Yu Gi Oh before that or after that but um it was kind of all in that general time where things yeah because that that was like that was kind of around because Yu-Gi-Oh and Pokemon were WB you know early 2000s late 90s yes. and then when uh what was it it was the Fox box at the time then yeah. became four kids TV had like you know the 17 shows you guys were doing and all, all of you know the it's funny because I think if I'm remembering right this is going way back for me too but I think I remember the first thing that I heard you in was like one of the Pokemon movies because at that oh, okay. time it was it was literally you know like 
Veronica, Rachel, Eric, Dan, you know, like like Maddie, the, you know, God rest her soul, Maddie yeah. at the time, you know, like like those same like ten folks in every episode, all the incidentals, all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when someone new would pop up, like, oh, this is a person I haven't heard before. Okay, okay you know. And even I remember with um, with Yu Gi Oh, it seemed like they were kind of trying to make an effort to not have too many of the same right. um, people in the in the main, you know, kind of traveling party or whatever. But you know, um, but I remember also when because uh, I of course I was a big fan of all that stuff when I was a kid too and when when uh, when duke showed up on on Yu-Gi-Oh and um as much as i love Yu-Gi-Oh it is a show where um uh, a good 90% of the characters um, yell everything yes. all the time. Like, all the time. Right. And uh, and then when you have, like, just this character who comes in is like, hi, I'm a human being. I just talk like a person. I'm just like, I like this guy. Right. <laughs> yeah. So so I always remember that. that, that was the fir- I think that was the first performance that I really, like, that that really kind of inspired me that I had heard from you early on. It was like, oh, wow, I like, like I believe everything, you know, even all, with all these ridiculous things going around. Yeah. And and Duke is just in, in there being like, "Stop! You're hurting my ears. Right. Shut <laughs> up!" Like was, I was like half expecting it to be like that, but um, and then and then also Ultimate Muscle, I did not see nearly as much of as I, I wish I had. Uh-huh. I had caught bits of it, but I knew that was you in there as well. I remember I would hear that on your old demo with the uh, the the cow, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, song or whatever. <laughs> right. And I'm like, all right, this is hilarious. I love so that that was also my first time of of, of seeing you as a as a leading guy, yeah. Um, and especially in a, in a cartoony show where just, I mean, everything, everybody in that entire uh, muscle Kinikuman series was just I- insane. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, I, do you do you prefer doing the the goofy whack job kind of cartoony stuff more so or, or, or do you do you also like doing the, the kind of more dramatic side type of thing? Uh, I, I, pr- I prefer more the goofy, wacky stuff like I, I mm-hmm. like to really go over the top with stuff and, and, and be big and exaggerated. And, you know, that's. That's more fun for me. I, I, I always feel a little lost at sea when I have to be subtle and that when I have to kind of be more grounded. It's 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 much harder for me to kind of stay consistent. And, uh, you know, because it, it's, it's sometimes I don't trust that it will be enough. So um, a good director can pull that out of me, but it's not my natural impulse so <laughs> well well here's something because i'm jumping around a little bit from the outline i have but uh, obviously the the star wars audiobook stuff has been something for when i when i first discovered audible and i started looking up a lot of the the names that i knew i'm like oh oh my god all the all the poor kids and like new york guys yeah. they all do audiobooks yeah. i'm hearing oh I, of course i know all these guys and um when i learned that that the, you know talk about how you got the star wars thing because i think i had also learned you you weren't big on doing that kind of you know, audiobook stuff is a very long uh kind of tiresome form of uh of vo just in terms of hours alone um but uh i mean that that in terms of the narration just alone like that's i think a little bit more so on the the dramatic side uh what kind of led to that because of course that's such a big part of your career as well right yeah so um basically what happened was is i had been doing animation for a while and and kind of you know uh had a a pretty decent resume doing the different you know, shows I was on or whatever. Um, so, and I eventually was able to get an agent and they started working with me and my agent called at one point and was like, you know, Hey, have you ever done an audio book? And I was basically trying to talk her out of it because in high school, I was the kid who, if you had to do a book report, I would rent the movie instead of read the book. Like I just like was not a reader. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah. you know, got bored very easily. I probably have some undiagnosed ADHD and just, you know, I, so re- reading was not like an entire three, 400 page book was not something that I was excited about doing. So I was kind of like, no, not really, you know? And she was like, well, they're auditioning in this new Star Wars book. And I was like, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Yes, yes, I would love to do it. Yes. <laughs> and like, you know, please let me do this. Um, so I they gave me a couple pages of the book and they said, you know, go into the studio and kind of prepare this and then you're going to read for the director. And um, I like really, really worked hard on it because Star Wars is like the ultimate, you know, fandom for me. Like I, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. So I. I like really worked on the characterizations and I was like praying about it. I was like, God, please let me get this. And, you know, so like I go in and I feel like I really prepared. Um, and they, they liked me enough that they were like, okay, yeah, you're, you're going to do it. And this was like a nine, a nine book series. It was like a nine story arc that they wanted one narrator to do all nine of these books. Um, 
So I got it because of that. But when when I actually then had to do it, it was like, wow, this is hard, you know, and <laughs> and I was just so not used to, you know, reading it straight through. But then also just the art of storytelling. Like, I feel like I always tell people I got cast because I could mimic some of the voices and do some interesting character voices. Sure. sure. But the director really had to work with me about how to make the prose make sense and how to make the kind of long descriptions of what the room looked like or what this character is thinking, you know, engaging. Cause I, I was kind of treating it as like the way you would almost read stage directions. I was like, you know, mm-hmm. you know, he walked in the room, the room was the door to the right. And it was, and at one point the director was like, okay, wait, 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 wait. You're, you're making these parts kind of boring. The, the dialogue is interesting, but all this other, the most of the book is not dialogue. So you have to find a way to make that more engaging and, and, and connect to that more. And, uh, so he kind of had to really hold my hand through that, <laughs> but, uh, but uh, it's, it it, it, it's a very fine art for yeah. sure. Yeah. It, it was when I lived in New York, I, I, that was, that was definitely one facet that I didn't pursue super hard. I, I don't, I don't even think I knew where to, to, to try looking for it, but audible of course is based on the East coast. And, um, I know you and uh, Ali and oh, uh, yeah. you know, Dan, a lot of, a lot of folks have done so, so, so many. And yeah, it, it really is. It's funny. You mentioned storytelling. I feel like in a certain sense, audiobooks they are kind of like the purest essence for, for, for VO anyway, yeah. in terms of just storytelling and like, yeah, finding that kind of balance of like, even, even if you're not reading it and you're just listening to it, it, it still has to keep people engaged as much as possible. But I think the fact that you had all those, um, the actual character interpretations uh, in your back pocket as impressions for so long, and then you were able to, you know, because I, I, that, that's, that's kind of a nice circumstance where like, okay, but we can help with right. yeah. <laughs> we can help with with finessing the other part of it and 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 you know because kind of this goes back to the earlier bit about the dramatic versus cartoony stuff as well is with um I, I felt like a lot of the and as I'm sure you've probably seen over the years the the four kids guys the New York guys got a little bit of flack from people of like oh you know it's so obnoxious and yeah. you know whatever about the, the way the acting style was but then when I would like I'm actually I'm watching uh, Berserk right now and and then I go back and uh, Ninja Nonsense was another one some of the MYV stuff or otherwise you know the old Media Blasters and Central Park Media stuff right here those same guys doing you know more kind of like serious yeah. anime stuff and I'm just like no they're perfectly capable of doing that it's just it's a different kind of job yeah, and it's totally. like and and some take to it some some excel at others some prefer others and etc but but i i always loved you know and then with gundam obviously which we, we both got to work on hearing all of you guys throughout the last like you know four different series that we've done maybe more at this point um is always a pleasure so i, lo- I love getting to hear you guys do everything and then turning to to you know the wackier stuff like uh, you know, turtles and right. and um, Viva Pinata, that kind of stuff. Which, on that note, um, that was uh, I know that was a big score for you guys when you know the prelay stuff was kind of going away a little bit, and then yeah. when Four Kids was really super doing well, and they had uh, original cartoons they were producing as well. Um, with uh, with Pinata and Turtles, where you guys got to be in the room together. Yeah, uh, I've I've only had a small foot in that kind of world in terms of ensemble stuff, but I, I imagine you must have some some funny memories or stories about, uh, you know, palling around with those guys in those couple shows. Yeah. I mean, that was pretty special because it, it is very rare that you get to record in a group like that. So, mm-hmm. um, I've only gotten to do it a handful of times, but it, it was pretty epic and pretty awesome. <laughs> you know, and there were definitely a lot of times where they had to like, you know, the, the, you would go off script and kind of like, you know, improv and ramp vamp and stuff. And especially like, you know, Wayne is very, very funny in the booth. And, you know, <laughs> so there's a he's, he's got a very dry uh, yeah, sense of humor. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there were times that it had to get reeled in. But uh, but it was it was really fun. And like I, I definitely and I, you know, it's it's a shame it's not done more because you really can get so much of a more nuanced performance when you're playing off of other people and when you're you're, you're kind of, you know, influenced by how they're reading it. And you're, when you're listening to them, that inspires you how you're going to read that next line. And, and it just there's nothing quite like it uh, to, to be able to kind of do it in a group session like that. And I wish there were more opportunities to do that. Yeah, I feel like even now, I mean, and, and even beyond just the pandemic stuff and everything. Yeah, it is becoming more and more rare yeah. uh, for, for any center to do that. Um, with uh, actually kind of as a side note, because I, I know you've been a big comic guy. Was uh, did you grow up with the Turtles comics? Like, was Casey like a big deal? Oh my god, I'm Casey Jones. Yeah, that was like probably because I I I missed the 
Pokemon Yu-Gi-Oh craze. Like, well, I guess yeah, yeah, I was in yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh, but like the, uh, but I didn't grow up with those. So like, I I didn't have the connection to it that a lot of other people have. And and so, mm-hmm. but but Turtles was the first show I ever got where I was like, I grew up watching that. I I know these characters, and that that was like, you know, I was walking down the street and they called, and I just remember like you know, kind of fist pumping the air, like, yes. And like, you know, just walking down 23rd street, like so excited that, that I booked that. And, and, you know, and what a huge honor that was. And, uh, we got to meet with, uh, I believe it was, I always get them confused, but I think it was Peter Laird came in and was consulting and we got to meet with him and stuff. And Mm -hmm. so, yeah, that, that was, that was a major big deal for that. And then I've been really fortunate since then to kind of work on a bunch of shows that I grew up with, but like reboots and all that stuff, but uh, yeah, you know, of course, but, but that, of course, that was yeah. that was that was a big deal for me to get that one. <laughs> was there uh, was there some influence? I imagine from some of the. I mean, well, and actually, on that note, because yeah, you've played many characters that have had multiple multiple uh, incarnations over you know yeah. shows and games and all sorts of things. Um, I, I I remember when I when I met Dan Green the first time years ago when I, I interviewed him for like a school project like you know ten plus years ago. We talked about um, Sigma Six, which yeah. was. Uh, Kind of a <clears throat> missed opportunity, sadly. Yeah. But the fact that, like, wow, jo- <laughs> wow, a G.I. A G. Joe anime and, like, you know, all these. And, and especially, it's, I, f- I feel like the majority of these, you've gotten to be, like, multiple. Mul- I mean, G.I. Joe, again, you're, what, like, four or five different guys like, on that, too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, You know, like, when you, when you were working on some of those kind of properties, uh, do, would you draw from, you know, influence from other previous iterations and things? Or would you more often kind of try to make it your own? Like, what was usually your process for that kind of no, stuff? No, for me, I wanted to uh, go lean into the nostalgia and, and do the ones that I grew up on. So I, I was definitely, you know, doing, trying to imitate, you know, the Cobra Commander from the 80s and the Destro from the 80s. And, and, and my Megatron is very much, you know, inspired by Frank Wilker. And, you know, so it's, it's. There's little things that are different, but I'm I'm definitely mimicking them and, and trying to kind of be true to what I grew up with, because I was just thinking if I'm, you know, as a fan, if, you know, if for of my generation, that's what I would want to see, you know, <laughs> so of course, of course. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, and of course, there's certainly, you know, through lines with, uh, you know, I mean, you can't have cobra commander with some kind of you know throat shredding kind of quality to right, it yeah. uh in some way but um uh I'd kind of a side going off the topic a little bit but um i know obviously you're a big family man uh yes. i don't know and uh you know very busy dude in general what do you like to do for fun how do, how does mark thompson decompress <laughs> what's a, what's a day in the life for you like <laughs> um i'm like so i'm i'm a big sci-fi guy so i watch like all the Star Treks that are out right now. Uh, I'm going to be watching Andor when I get off with you. Um, so I'm, I'm really into that. I love going to the movies. Um, I'm actually like, I joined a couple of the Star Wars clubs. So I'm in the the Rebel Legion and uh, Saber Guild. And they're like Star Wars charity groups. So we like dress up as costumes and then go to like libraries or children's hospitals and stuff like that. And uh, we put on little shows or we kind of meet the kids and take photos and stuff. So um, I, I, I do that a lot. I'm pretty active in my church and I kind of help lead the teen ministry and stuff. So we're, we mm-hmm. do a bunch of stuff with that. So a lot of stuff like that. We go camping with my family and play with my dogs and oh. Oh, lots of fun stuff. Are your, uh, are your kids all out of school and everything as well? Or are they, are they all, I don't, I don't even know at this point. Uh, my, my youngest is, uh, finishing, uh, high school. So like he's, my youngest is, okay. uh, this is his senior year actually. So. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, yeah, it's funny because uh, Brian Drummond, uh, who's a Canadian voiceover actor, he was my last guest, and he was like, "Yeah, no, my three kids, they all try." Actually, kind of on that, I was reminded from that note. Did, did any of your kids ever take any interest in voiceover? No, uh, Erica Schroeder's uh, yeah. couple of her kids have done some stuff. Have they have they kind of delved into that world a little bit? Or um, they 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 tip they dipped a toe in there. Like they, they when they were younger, I would have casting directors that were looking to cast like you know kid sounding voices. Um, so both of them got to do um, a, a, a little bit of dubbing. Like they, they both kind of worked on different shows at different times when they were like maybe like eight or nine or 10 or something like that. Um, and, and they liked it. And, and, you know, like they got a little spoiled because they were like, oh, I'll, I'll just do that. Like, I, I like getting money for that, you know, but then they don't realize that you don't get to work when you want to work. You have to like, you know, try out and you don't 
know when you're going to get hired and when you're not. So, um, but then it was, they, they gravitated more towards like engineering and, and stuff like that. Like I was, they, oh. they kind of like had the mirror experience of me. Like my dad was an engineer and I was like, he was always trying to get me to go in the garage and like, you know, help out and learn that stuff. And I always wanted to do theater and couldn't wait to get to New York city. And then they mm-hmm. grew up uh, with me and I was always like, Hey, are you going to audition for the school play? Or are you going to do And they're like, no, that's lame. I don't want to do that. <laughs> you know? And then, <laughs> and then they rebelled against me by wanting to be engineers and move out of New York and go back to the suburbs. <laughs> and I was like, Oh man. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I, going back earlier to something else I was remembering, I didn't extrapolate too much on this, but, um, I, uh, I was reminded by uh, those of you who don't know Dan Green and Eric Stewart are doing a lovely podcast right now called uh, the heart of the cards. Yeah. And um, they did a, a, as kind of their um, episode zero. They they had a a special kind of memorial um, sort of tribute thing to uh, Kazuki Takahashi, who is of course the creator of Yu Gi Oh that passed away recently. And um, you and a lot of the other cast uh, left some really lovely messages, uh, just kind of about your experience of working on Yu Gi Oh for God seven seven generations yeah. worth of, of series by this point. Yeah. And um, yeah, I. I I, I always kind of wish that I got to know, uh, I, I came into the New York scene way late. I, I, I did my thing in 2009, was my first, uh, I, I did five episodes of Pokemon, and I, I would meet some of you guys at cons here and there, like kind of passing the hall at certain things. I, I only ever had like one audition of four kids, I, what, as I discovered, oh, this was right next to my school that I went to for four years, and I had no <laughs> idea. But, but, but I always admired that a lot of the communities uh, there, and out here too, and, and in, in Dallas and uh, Vancouver, and everything like are super tight and i always got the impression that like you and everybody from that gang were all really cool with each other did did you i forgot did you guys did you know some of the others like before you were doing some of the the four kids stuff or did you get to really know them afterward and everything what's kind of been your your uh your working relationship uh with with everybody yeah no it was all just after like i, I think oh, okay, i think gotcha. i met eric first because like i said he was uh casting and directing most of the shows or, or a lot of the shows that I worked on over there. Um, and then I got to know Dan and Wayne, like I, like I got to know like Greg and Wayne um, and Sam Regal from, uh, and Mike Sin- center Nicholas from turtles. Uh, and c- cause I got to record with them a lot. So that, that was, you know, and I think if, I think being in the booth helped me really get to know them versus like just everyone doing their own individual session. Um, and then through, Eric, I, got, I I met Dan, and I think Dan Dan's directed me a lot. Um, yeah, that's right. So like that's I, right. but but it wasn't necessarily a for kids, but like he he directed me in the Astonishing X Men motion comic, and we actually like Greg put together a little theater company at one point, and a bunch of us from Poor Kids did a little show. We did a bunch of one acts together. Um, and that was super fun. Um, and we got to know each other a lot through that as well. So, um, and now, and now we're kind of starting to, or at least I'm starting to kind of do more cons and stuff. And so I'm starting to kind of see them all again Mm -hmm. through that. So, but yeah, that's, it's been really one of the best blessings of it all is just getting to meet those guys and become friends with everybody. And cause it's, it's a really solid group of people. Like everybody's super talented and super kind. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that that also reminds me, I forgot to even write this down in my outline. Um, I remember when I was starting to research, because of course, a, a, a lot of the a lot of the New York scene was also kind of shrouded in mystery. A lot of folks <laughs> up until I feel like the last few years were a little bit more on the private side yes, and, yes, yes, and everything, yes. which is which is fair enough. Yeah. Um, but I uh, as I was kind of, you know, researching and learning it just because I was really fascinated with everything. I remember when I first uh, learned about you, I saw that you were also like producing and creating your own stuff as well, which, you know, that that's I love doing that. I that that's been my main thing. Voiceover came secondary because I, I went to I went to SVA um, oh, cool. again, like ar- around the corner from from four kids, as I had no idea for years. But um, I was studying animation, and then I was seeing you were you were doing like some of these like parody kind of cartoons and some live action things or whatever <laughs> back in the day. I don't know. I don't know if those are still uh, up anywhere on YouTube or anything. But um, was that was that a little bit of an era of like you know what I'm gonna, I'm going to get into to being a content creator <laughs> just just kind of for fun. Well, what uh, I'm not sure I know what you're talking about. Like what did I do? 
There, there was, there was like a, there was a oh. parody of like Avatar at one point, yes. and there was one where like it was like a Batman thing, Got and you, you were like dubbing wow, over okay. your friend you in really a costume. Did research. Yeah, yeah, that, that's going, that's going way bad. But I, I, I haven't thought about that in like years. I was like, oh my god, yeah, those. those. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, well, honestly, those were were stuff from my church. Like, I, uh, we would, we would oh, often okay. do like marriage retreats and stuff. And so mm-hmm. I would do these like spoofs and parodies and then we would show them as like the entertainment at, uh, at a marriage retreat or like a, a teen camp or something like that. So most of those were kind of uh, for that. Um, and then I don't know, like every like I worked at a I still work at a radio station where a lot of times they do like song parodies and things like that. So sometimes we would do something with that. So uh, but that's mm-hmm. funny. That's cool that you know about that. Yeah, yeah, no, that's good. That's su- I know that's a super obscure thing. Yeah. Uh, I promise I'm not a stalker. Um, but uh, about the Star Wars and just fandom and everything again, um, you're talking about following all the Disney Plus uh, stuff and everything. Yeah, what are, uh, t- t- even as of late, what are uh, some shows and movies? And I don't know if you play games or anything, but uh, stuff that you're really, really into, you know, either more recently or stuff that you've been into consistently for a long time. Right. I mean, Star Wars and Star Trek were my main things that I've been to most of my life and just, you know, are my main kind of fandoms. Mm-hmm. Um, I uh, I loved the movie Everything Everywhere All at Once. Like, I've been obsessed with that and kind of telling everyone I know to see that movie because mm-hmm. <laughs> I just mm-hmm. think that's amazing. Um, there's I was big into Lost for a while. Um, there's this show that's on right now called Evil that's pretty interesting. Basically anything sci-fi. Like I, I watched Foundation. I watched Raised by Wolves. So anything with like spaceships and aliens, I've, I'm kind of gravitate towards and, and, and love that stuff. So um, I, I know on uh, there's always you know the comic book world has kind of invaded yeah. so much of mainstream media. I, I remember oh, on, I'm a uh, big Marvel fan. Oh yes. yeah, I know as am I, and, and and DC stuff as well. I know I know um, on the, the interview with Malik, you were talking about some of the stuff with like yeah, the DC movies have not been what we all probably would like them to be in terms of right. you know, measuring. Are you into, Oh, actually, no, here's something. Do you, um, and especially with uh, your kids and everything, did you watch a lot of, uh, animated stuff like from around other places? And, and did you, did you feel kind of pretty tapped into like the sound of, uh, you know, other cartoons, uh, like on the cartoonier side, the serious side? Cause I think of stuff like justice league, which I still adore. I love that. I, I think DC's yeah. animation stuff is, has always been fantastic. Um, where their live action stuff uh, lacks a little bit, um, right. stuff like that. Did you follow much in terms of like even even not just out of enjoyment, but even kind of just like keeping up with uh, the evolution of of animation voiceover? I guess probably not as much as I should have. Like I definitely loved the Batman the animated series of course, and of course. The Superman series, yeah. um, and uh, and and definitely kept up with Justice League for a while. But but yeah, not not a whole big bunch like um i i loved like spongebob and uh what was the other one um well ren and stimpy was when i was growing up oh, like, yeah, like spongebob <laughs> and then i got a little bit into um my kids were into regular show for a while so i was watching that um so so th- those were super fun and then like recently my kids like it i i've probably t- said this before but like i i feel like i always kind of missed the window with them because mm-hmm. i was when I was on like Ninja Turtles and G.I. Joe, they were super young and not quite ready for those shows. But then when they were old enough to kind of be into those shows, I was doing like little kid shows like Umizumi or, you know, uh, Peking Duckling and these and kind of these like yeah, more yeah, little yeah. Kid shows. <laughs> so I kept missing the window. But recently they've um, gotten into anime on their own, uh, like not the stuff I do, but like, you know, they're into like Jujutsu Kaisen, mm. uh, Attack on Titan, um, and a, and a bunch of these other shows and and but they're they're more into the the subtitles than the dubbing so they're like subs or subs over dubs dad <laughs> like <laughs> you know like, that's what oh, i do right good, it's great. Like, no it's better man like, oh, you can't, you know. yeah yeah well it's that, a good thing that, they didn't grow up with the old school stuff where it's just like why did why did they ruin all, exactly. all the shows you worked on it's like because i just just go to your room <laughs> right, right. <laughs> 
Oh, my gosh. Well, um, I know we're getting uh, close to the end here. Uh, a major thing I want to focus on this last uh, little section is um, a big reason why I've been doing a lot of these uh, interviews with, with some of the big vets I've been lucky enough to get is um, myself and uh, a lot of my colleagues, people that are kind of part of the same generation of, uh, of my own. Uh, we've been able to hollow out uh, voiceover careers for ourselves, which uh, I'm, I've been very grateful for. I started in New York. Um, getting to do Pokemon was a tremendous, because I grew up with it since the very beginning, and, and I that was a tremendous honor for me. Never got to do Yu-Gi-Oh, sadly. That would that would have been oh. cool. <laughs> but um, And then I've been out here in L.A. for about eight years now, and um, I mentioned before, I've had a little bit of a, a dip into the um, the animation world in particular. Um, but uh, because you you started with original characters and then dubbing was just, it was an audiobooks and games and all this other stuff was kind of uh, a secondary sort of thing. You are, you are a master of developing characters as far as I'm concerned. Oh, um, so I, I know that like the, like asking what advice would you give to, to oh, yeah. actors is such a broad question, but um, for, for people that are particularly looking to kind of move to the next level that really want to okay. let, want to boost themselves up as performers. Um, you know, I don't know if you've done, acting teaching or anything like that before but but in terms of uh of of, of trying to, to to push people to to do even better people who are yeah. already performers what types of things would you recommend well um when i was first starting out there was a book that i read called uh talking funny for money and i can't remember the author now which is awful but uh it was this this woman and it was very practical and and one of the things that they talked about is kind of, you know, and I, we, we did this in college as well, but they, they talked about the idea of using your voice the way you would use an instrument. Mm -hmm. And in the same ways that if you hold down different frets on a guitar or if you push down different valves on a, you know, wind instrument, um, you can change the pitch, you can change the, um, you, you can change the, the kind of, you know, vibrations and stuff by, by focusing on different parts of your body. And she had this thing about different areas of your voice and, and kind of talking about how you have different resonators. Like you have your chest resonator, you have your nasal resonator, you have your head resonator and you have your glottal or, or kind of guttural, you know, resonator in your throat. Mm -hmm. And she talked about how you can get different sounds by focusing on placing the sound uh, in those different places in your body. So if I talk in my chest resonator, it's, it's very down low and there's a lot of, you know, resonance and bass in there. And then if I put it in my throat, it gets a little scratchy and it might have some texture. And, and that could be used to kind of have a different type of character. And then if you move up into, into the mask and if you kind of put your fingers on, on your nose and, and you get a little nasal sound. And it, it sounds completely different than what I was doing before. And you might make a nerdy character out of this or someone who's sheepish or shy. And then you can go into kind of a, a falsetto if you place it in, in your skull, in your head and kind of, oh, hello there. I'm. I'm Mickey Mouse, you know, it's put higher in falsetto, you know, and you can kind of, and if you, if you, you can mix and match those things um, and, you know, put, put a, put a little gravel, like a little bit in your throat and a little bit in your mask or a little bit in your chest. And, and then you can play, you can get different characters uh, that, that sound completely different just by doing something as simple as placing the resonance in a different part of your body. And then you can add on to that, um, tempo like does this character speak slowly or quickly you can add on accents you can add on you know different like you know affectations like maybe this person has a lisp or a stutter or you know so there's j just kind of playing around with those different puzzle pieces uh is one of the ways that i've been able to create a bunch of characters that that sound distinct enough so that you don't always know it's it's the same person doing this voice, you know. Yeah, um, well, especially because I mean, you've been a what what would we say sometimes a utility player for yes. so many shows, and and I mean even cases where um you know you're the lead character like Ultimate Muscle going back to that you were the lead guy and you were also like I don't know like five to six other dudes that would be yeah, yeah. in and out sometimes <laughs> fighting with yourself too yeah totally. and and I think that that's such a useful skill to have because especially you know even to peel back the curtain a little bit if it's a budgetary thing and there's 
only oh, yeah. so many, you know, people that they can afford to have. And if they have, you know, like, I mean, Simpsons has guests all the time, but, you know, part of the reason why, you know, those seven or eight guys have lasted for so long is because they do, you know, almost the whole entire uh, town of Springfield <laughs> in any given right. episode. And yeah. um, I, I think that that's a big thing for that, that guys like yourself and some of the other guests have had, um, why you've had so much longevity in the business and been able to do so many different things. When um, when you get a, a new audition for something to this kind of a, a, a the next part of this is, um, what's kind of your process? Like whether you're given a, a visual or otherwise, um, like do you improv a whole lot with copy or kind of thing? What's what's kind of your or sort of uh, your, your, your secret sauce to that? <laughs> um, I try to, because usually, you know, you'll get the copy and there'll be like a brief paragraph of them outlining, you know, what they, what they're looking for. And, and sometimes they might, you know, give you certain actors or certain other characters that this character is similar to. And maybe you could sound like a Seth Rogen or, or sound like a Ben Stiller or, you know, so usually I'll try to kind of give them one or two where I'm latching on to the specs and I'm, I'm really trying to kind of attach myself to some of the things in that paragraph. And also what I try to do is sometimes those descriptions can feel contradictory. Like sometimes they can be like, you know, we want him to be really angry, but not mad. And we want him to be, you know, happy, but not, not too flippant or not, you know, like, you know, not, you know, naive or, you know, and so they can kind of be trying to find this balance, but they're describing it in such a way where it's like, well, what do they want? Like what, like, it seems like it's like, they're putting a bunch of opposites together, you know, or, 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 or different types that, that, that seem completely opposite. So sometimes it helps if I just pick like one or two things from the description and focus on that instead of trying to do everything that's in that paragraph, I'll try to really lock into the two if they say they're sarcastic or, or if they say they're like really naive, I, I really, I just focus on that part and I'll, I'll give them a read where I'm just focusing on that. And then maybe the second take, I'll focus on something different from that paragraph and really focus on, you know, the actor that they're comparing it to or, you know, whatever. And then sometimes I'll give them a third take where maybe there's something in the script that I'm seeing that's not in the specs. That's not, you know, there's something in the dialogue that I'm inspired by, but that, that's not described in any of the things the casting director is giving me. And maybe I'll, I'll try to give them something new. And, I'll, and I'll, you know, I try to give them like one or two that are just the lines of dialogue and, and and trying to stick to what they're doing. And then I try to give them like maybe one or two that are a little more improv -y. Maybe I'm adding some lines and maybe I'm kind of doing some, doing a completely different take than what they're asking for, you know? And, and there's definitely been times where that's worked out because they're, they're used to hearing three or, you know, 10, 12 people in a row all doing their same version of what this paragraph is. But then if I can give them something that's totally different as well, in addition to, so sometimes I've gotten hired because of that. Yeah. It's, a, it's a totally fresh take and it's something like, oh, I didn't think of that. Yeah, that, that actually works. Yeah. You know? And oftentimes they'll end up going with that thing that's com even as extreme as the complete opposite of what they were looking for right. in the description. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I've always personally, I've always kind of looked at um, and it, this is why it's frustrating to me sometimes when like here's a character side and it's like two or three lines at best. Like the the lazy part of me is like, oh, OK, good. I don't have to spend like right, you know, an yeah. hour sweating, my, you know, everything off of this. But I, I think that um, it, it can sometimes be a lot more gratifying when you have at least like five or six lines or more, because I feel like an audition for something, especially if it's a major character, it has to be kind of like a demo, uh, like like you're yeah. like you're, and that's a whole nother, you know, crafting a good demo is a whole nother thing I could go on forever about. But um, when you're given an audition, like you have to basically show that you can do every facet of them so that like, you know, if you get the part, it's not going to be a one hit wonder uh you know kind of same level unless that's the point of the character but you know that you really need to be able to show a, a level of emotional range within what they are but i think right. that even like finding that same middle ground of like you want to keep to what they're looking for but you want to put your own spin on it but like yeah it, it's it's such a weird like it's kind of a brain strain <laughs> sometimes yeah. And, yeah like, and you can be so confident it's like yeah that was that was really good and it, it could be completely like not what they're looking for or you know even this right. this, this that could be like all right all right, can we get uh, Brad Pitt? All right, he said yes. All right, cool. Well, that's the end of that. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, although, exactly. I, although I feel like, thankfully, for the New York scene, that's kind of a that, that that's a bit of a rare 
uh, scenario right. where that kind of comes in because I feel like it really is just um, like because even now I, I get to look at like you know Yu Gi Oh uh, Sevens that is the newest one and I uh-huh. still see guys like you and 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 Wayne and yeah. and you know Ted Lewis and guys like that that are like oh that have been around from the beginning that are st- that still have that that uh, notoriety of versatility that are always so reliable um, right and yeah, uh, yeah. Um, well and, and I guess I guess um because I know we'll we'll be wrapping up here in a minute um. In terms of folks out there that, uh, like myself, that grew up hearing you and, and then maybe are also working, um, I don't know, any any words of inspiration <laughs> to, because uh, I mean, no, for real, like, I mean, you've, you've really, you're a big pinnacle in this business still to this day. I think it's really a testament to the stuff that you've done as far as, as I've followed for, for many years, uh, so, uh, and, and I really appreciate you taking the time to do this and everything, seriously. Oh, yeah. No, I mean, uh, I think... Um what's interesting about it over the past 20 some odd years is that the, the ways that you get your foot in the door have evolved and changed. Mm-hmm. And there's so many, there's so much more content now. There's, there's so many different ways to kind of uh, make yourself known and, and kind of put yourself out there. And, um, but, but I think so, so I'm not necessarily an expert on all the different ways there are to get your foot in the door, but I, but I, I'm a, I'm a big believer in, um, if, if you're preparing and, and working on being the best performer you can be and being the best actor you can be, whatever opportunity you find yourself in, you'll be ready for that opportunity. Like if, if you're really just constantly working on being a great performer and, and, and really how to how to make a character come to life and how, how to make, you know, a character voice consistent and, uh, and and how to kind of be able to read a script relatively cold and, and, and kind of make it pop right away. Like if, if you can work on those skills, then everybody's path to the door is different. You know what I mean? Like I, I had that flyer on a cork board, you know, and nowadays somebody might make YouTube videos or TikTok videos and, and somebody might want to cast them from that, you know, or, you know, but, um, so the, so the ways you get in are going to be different and almost everybody, every one of my friends has a different story about how they got their foot in the door, you know? So I think I, I wouldn't waste too much time, stressing about that or worrying about that. Cause I think eventually that stuff is going to happen and that's going to come. And sometimes it'll be, you were in a play with someone and they remembered you, or you did a reading for someone or you did a class or, or, or whatever it is, you know, but, but if you just keep working on being the best actor, you can be whatever that opportunity is that gets put in front of your path, you'll be ready for it when it happens. Awesome. Well, uh, hey, man, thank you seriously for uh, for taking the time between everything to uh, to be here for this. Um, I, I know you don't do, go, you know, too uh, hard on social media, which is probably a much healthier life choice than I. Right, right. But, but uh, if people want to follow you, uh, you're, you're generally Captain Ahad on uh, most stuff out there, I think. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's Captain Ehud. It's uh, Captain E.H.U.D. Um and I'm on I'm that on Twitter and Instagram. I'm just myself on Facebook. Um, yeah. And I'm going to be I don't know when this is going to be heard or where it's going to be heard, but I'm going to be doing a convention in Fayetteville. I'm doing Fayetteville Comic Con in North Carolina um, on October 14th and 15th, I think. So. Oh, OK. I, you know what? It's funny. I think that this will be either right after or right before that, because this is for Voice October, <laughs> my, oh, my themed uh-huh. month. So, okay, cool. so uh, I, everybody go go check him out if you're going to that, or, or I hope that you got to see him if you were there at the con. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I think that I may have one last guest. I'm, I'm trying to finalize some things. This has been a little haphazard between many things going on. But, right. uh, but, but Mark, thank you again for being here. Everybody stay tuned. Subscribe to my channel and everything for the next lovely interview, probably the final installment of Voice October 2020. And uh, keep on saying speaking, recording, and voicing lovely things, everybody. We'll see you next time.